Taking a breather from the constant campaigning, we are looking at the agenda for City Council in Jacksonville. At large, Council Member Nick Howland is with us today, just six months into his term in City Hall. Plus, this exhibit at the Museum of Science and History, designed to explore what it calls the bias inside us. Mosh Vice President Anthony Mortimer joins the conversation. And solving problems instead of turning a blind eye to the bad news. Vic Nicolucci explains our new programming called Solutionaries, all ahead on This Week in Jacksonville. And welcome to September. Thanks for being with us today. And we start this morning from City Hall in Jacksonville. City Councilman Nick Howland is joining us, representing at-large Group 3. And this is interesting, the councilman elected in a special election. So you've really been on the job six months as of, I think, this week. What's that learning curve been like? Well, first of all, Ken, thanks for having me. The learning curve has been steep. I mean, frankly, um, I entered council mid-council year. Right. So I've got to vote on 40-some odd items in my first council meetings that my colleagues have seen for one, two, even three readings. So it was a lot of studying in the very beginning. And now I'm in the cycle. So um, I've really enjoyed it. I enjoy serving. I've enjoyed serving in the Navy. I have enjoyed serving over 20 years manufacturing uh, life-saving products for military members and first responders. I've enjoyed helping end veteran suicide across the state of Florida, and now I'm enjoying being on Jacksonville City Council. So what have been the biggest, I guess, surprises or challenges so far in terms of serving on City Council? Actually, the biggest uh, uh, surprise, it shouldn't have been, but is how warmly I was welcomed um, by my colleagues at City Council. I mean, keep in mind that I ran a special election to replace a long uh, time beloved leader in Jacksonville and Tommy Azuri, who served over three right. decades uh, for his city. And uh, my colleagues have embraced me in fact, I credit then Council President Sam Newby and current Council President Terrence Freeman for uh, welcoming me so warmly. And not only that, but kind of throwing me in the deep end as far as leadership, because here we are six months in and I'm vice chair of the Rules Committee, chair of the Jacksonville Waterways Commission. Um, and I'm enjoying every minute of it. Yeah, I'm, and I'm sure anybody coming into that is like, there's no way you can replace Tommy Hazuri. That's right. Uh, but crafting your own path there. You know, candidates often uh, are accused when they run on a platform, hey, they didn't fulfill their campaign promises. How do you feel like you've done on that? Are there promises from the campaign that you feel like you're living up to? In my campaign, I focused on three goals. Uh, safer streets, job growth, investing responsibly in every neighborhood in Jacksonville. From a safer streets perspective, I'm now the city council's liaison to the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, and we're about to approve the strongest, most technology-driven police budget that the city has ever seen. Uh, from a job growth perspective, I'm one of only a handful of council members who has manufacturing experience. I've brought three businesses to Jacksonville, relocated them here, so I'm working with the Office of Economic Development to tweak our incentive program to figure out how we attract more manufacturing and distribution companies. And then from responsible growth in every neighborhood, I sit on the Land Use and Zoning Commission, and we can't approve responsible development fast enough. Um, all ways that I've been able to make an impact so far in just six months. And you referenced uh, the technology and the policing budget. So almost $540 million is what that proposal is for JSO. That's right. Uh, is that something that councils, I mean, it's, it's an important part of the year. City Council is going through the budget approval process right now. Where do we stand on that? We will vote on that budget on September 27th in the City Council meeting. And frankly, Kent, if you had told me we're gonna have a budget that has historic investment in public safety, um, massive infrastructure investment, parks, roads, drainage, septic tank removal, while also kind of increasing our reserve funds for rainy days and decreasing the property tax rate. I would have said you're crazy, but that's the budget that we have and I look forward to approving it on September 27th. I, I know this is at the federal level, but there's a local connection. This week, President Biden spoke uh, speech in Pennsylvania, he said, hey, the solution is not defund the police, it's funding police. Well, clearly, an increasing budget for JSO. How do you feel about what happened two years ago when people in Jacksonville were saying, no, we're not sure that that's the way to go. We want more funding for uh, education, training, et cetera, not more funding for officers and weapons, et cetera. Well, if you listen to Interim Sheriff um, Ivy, um, he clearly stated when he came to talk about his budget proposal that we're 400 officers short. Now, this budget 
while one of the largest, most technology-driven budgets that Jacksonville has seen for the police department still is short of adding that many police. But there is no replacement for sworn officers on the streets. When you can't replace them that quickly, you got to go technology. But I trust Interim Sheriff Ivy um, to uh, deliver a budget which will keep our streets and our neighborhoods safe. Yeah. So, and that's uh, clearly that's just one component of the budget. About a third of the entire Duval County city budget for the city of Jacksonville. That's right. All right. Local elections again in March. What do you expect the, the city to tackle between now and then when that focus kind of changes a little bit? <laughs> yeah, to think I'm back on the campaign trail. Right. Right. So, uh, right, local elections are in March. Um, they'll heat up again after the state and federal midterms in November. Um, there's going to be, on the ballot, will be the future of Jacksonville. So, you know, in the next 10 years, I've said it last winter in my special election campaign, I'll say it again this winter, we're at a critical juncture um, for Jacksonville. So we are growing leaps and bounds. We have the opportunity to harness that growth and make Jacksonville a great American city. It's that opportunity that I want to turn into a reality. Well, I guess as I think through that, what's the vision you have for the city of Jacksonville? And obviously it's a short term, these next six months or whatever, but you've got a longer plan for how you accomplish that through city council, right? Sure. Well, I mean, if you think about where the census will have us in 2030, we're going to be about a 1.3 million person city. Right now we're a 1 million city. That's pretty astronomical growth. So we need to make sure we bolster our police budgets to ensure we have safer streets and neighborhoods as folks move here. We need to make sure that we attract businesses, um, particularly manufacturing and distribution like I've talked about, to ensure we have jobs for all the families relocating here. And responsible development is the most important thing as we look out over the next 10 years. How we make up for unfulfilled promises in some of our urban core. How we structure and grow neighborhoods responsibly in um, uh, kind of our outlying areas to handle the population growth. And how we do it while protecting all of our natural resources that make Jacksonville such an attractive place, like our beach, yeah. our river, our waterways, our climate, our yeah. uh, uh, employment environment, and our low-tax environment. I accentuate some of those positives which people really need to know about. Exactly. Whether they're coming here or going to stay here or what have you. you Nick Howland, City Councilman, thanks so much for the time. Kent, thanks for having me. All right, you got it. So stay with us. I-Team investigator, news anchor, and now Solutionaries reporter, Nick Nicolucci. He's going to be with us. going to talk about this important programming. That's next on This Week in Jacksonville. Don't go anywhere. Over the years, people have asked me, how did your firm get so big? The answer is simple. We won a lot. In this business, you grow by winning. As America's largest injury law firm, we have more lawyers than any other injury firm. Morgan & Morgan. My husband Steve was diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's, so I made the hardest decision that I ever had to make, and I placed him in a memory care center. I wanted to see him on March 11th of 2020, and on the very next day, they called me and told me, you can't come back. I met with Governor DeSantis. I sat down with he and the First Lady, and they both listened. One month later, he announced that he was letting us back in. I told him that I would be grateful to him for the rest of my life for what he had done to get us all back to our loved ones. Go ahead, share and pin your local photos on Snapjacks. In the next second, 14 families will decide. That's it, we're getting a bigger house. Finally. But we gotta sell this place. Before we buy the next place. And then in the meantime. So how long are you staying? Emily, no! Oh, a little cramped. I am cheap, pop man. Or skip the in-laws. Sell and buy your house with confidence. With Open Door, move when you're ready. That's it. Indeed. When life's doors open, we'll handle the house. Why do you need new floors? How often does this happen? Never mind. Our kid-proof floors can take it. Right now, you can save up to 50% on specially marked kid-proof flooring and get special financing on select purchases made with your Floor Trader credit card. Save on beautiful hardwood, carpet, luxury vinyl, tile, and more. It's in stock and ready to go. Floor Trader, the money saver. 
Shop incredible Labor Day savings now at Bears Furniture. With remarkable savings even on brands that rarely go on sale. Save 50% or more store-wide with 0% financing available. Shop the largest selection of Tommy Bahama home and more. Like this gorgeous Avondale bedroom now 50% off. This beautiful Bernhardt sofa is only $19.98. And this coastal living dining table just $8.98. Shop now through Labor Day Monday. Where? Bears. It's the weekend, and we know accidents can happen anytime. That's why we're here for you 24 7. Don't wait until Monday. Call Farrah and Farrah. The third annual Jacksonville Image Awards returns for an in person gala, and we want to see you there. Join us as we celebrate African American to inspire and make a difference in our community. Tickets are on sale now, and this is such a special event. With live musical performances, inspiring stories, plus the chance to recognize people who are making black history. The third annual Jacksonville Image Awards Gala, presented by The Porter Firm, Saturday, September 17th. Get your tickets now at newsforjax.com. You're watching This Week in Jacksonville with Kent Justice. Investigating big problems affecting you and more importantly, looking for the solutions. That's the goal behind Solutions Journalism and the wheels are turning right here in Jacksonville with a new digital show called Solutionaries. Reporter and anchor Vic Michelucci is with us. He's part of this nationwide project which uh, aims to make a difference. Vic, something compelling as I've been learning about it and getting to see what you're doing now. So tell us how it works. It's really interesting. So Kent, you and I, we've heard from people in our community, our viewers, right? Yeah. They're tired of all the bad news. They yeah. hate turning on the news and then just hearing about problem after problem after problem. But we know that we can't ignore these problems. So what do we do? We look for the solutions, hence solutionaries. So we're looking at these big problems that are plaguing people all across the country and in our area, these everyday problems that could affect your family members, your loved ones, your colleagues. And then we're looking to see who is finding solutions and what they're doing about those. And we're vetting these solutions because we know that there's not a one cure pill that's going to be out there and solve all of these problems. So we've been on some really interesting projects. So one of the things that, that we've been talking about, okay, so there's a focus and it's not just you and our station. There's a bunch of our stations that are, are part of our company that are looking at a particular issue and then finding some of those. So tell us about what's happened this month, month of, uh, well, this past month of August. Yeah, Kent. So this month we just rolled out an episode called Safer Schools. Obviously kids are back in class, whether they're in preschool or in college parents, families, the community cares about their safety. We've had so many school shootings. Yeah. Uvalde, an example, so many children and, and teachers and staff members at risk. So we are looking at how we can make our schools safer. It's a nationwide problem. So we actually traveled to Syracuse, New York. Why? Because there's a company up there that's known as a trendsetter. And the men and women at this company actually have a contract with Duval County, as well as so many other counties across the state of Florida, to protect and fortify our schools. They make attack resistant glass and film which is supposed to slow down that active shooter slow down the attacker and we said hey this sounds great but we want to put right. it to the test so take a look this is us actually at their factory testing it out ourselves this film the company makes goes on after a windows in place it takes a few bullets and cuts down on the shooters visibility clear so now we're gonna transition to a baseball bat but it doesn't take long to breach the door. That's failure. Finally, we get a demonstration of the company's safety glass. This has an outer layer of film and a thicker layer in between two panes of glass. We're going hot. Then he let me put it to the test. So this glass has 70 rounds in it from an AR-15 and then a 9mm handgun. We have some small holes, but the question is, am I going to be able to break through it with this baseball bat? Mm. 
That's the cliffhanger, is that what you're saying? That's the cliffhanger, Kent. <laughs> this was something as, as we ran this program, we ran it on air, there's also a digital component that Vic will talk about here in a moment. But that was certainly something that stood out because it wasn't just, hey, here's something that's happened. You guys went and investigated and looked at what the solutions are and if they work, right? If they work, it's got to be proven. There's got to be evidence. And we know that there's limitations, which is a big part of solutions journalism too. Like I said at the beginning, there's not a one fix for these issues, but there are things that we can do uh, to fortify our campuses, to protect our teachers and our students, things like that. So that was, you know, incredibly informative. And as we are going through this, we're literally hands on, yep. getting dirty, doing these stories, documentary style. Some of these pieces are 10 minutes long. That's not your traditional That's news sure. format, yeah. but we need that time to look at these complex issues. And we've been able to do that with not just safer schools, Kent, but safer streets. Well, that's that's part of what I wanted to get at. So that that was the focus for that that month or, or sure. that, that episode or show. What are some of the other things that you guys are working on or I, I can find when I go on this digital channel you'll tell us about? So them. safer streets, your wife, your kids, they're out there on the roads every single day. They're next to semi-trucks. And whether it's the truck driver that's at fault or some other driver or weather conditions, we want to make sure that these crashes are more survivable. So you're looking at some crash tests that we literally <laughs> went through step by step and some technology to keep people from dying when they're going under semi-trucks. We also went to Atlanta, the Peach State, really controversial place when it comes to elections. Yeah. We're looking to see how they're fortifying elections, making sure that it is safe, that it's fair, that it's accurate for everybody, not just one side of the political aisle, because we are serving everybody here. And then food deserts. You go to some neighborhoods and they don't have access to Something fresh fruits about here and vegetables. In Jacksonville, yeah. Big problems. Well, guess what? There are solutions right here in Jacksonville that most people don't know about. Urban farms, beekeepers, people that are teaching families to farm here in our community, and then they're getting their fresh vegetables, their fresh fruit for free, and they're also getting a cooking lesson, and they're learning how they can do this in their backyard. And guess what, Kent? They're passing this along to their children and their grandchildren and for generations to come so that we have a healthier society in the future. I mean, these are stories that at the root of them are difficult problems, but I think that you end up watching solutionaries and come out with a smile. Vic, one of the things that I'm enjoying about it is uh, we can do a story here in Jacksonville about those farmers, the community farmers, and that kind of thing. And it applies across the country. Sure. We can also see stories from other other parts of the country that are in our kind of our network of TV stations that our our parent company owns. And that impacts how we can do things here as well, right? Absolutely. And they might be doing something better in Detroit that we in Jacksonville need to learn a lesson from. They might be doing something better in Houston or vice versa, they can learn from us. We've got this network across the country now and with YouTube, with our platform, our digital platform, anybody around the world can watch it and we can all collectively come together for solutions to make our individual communities better. All right, so we, uh, people can see your excitement for sure. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, how do people watch this? How do they see this? You just referenced it a moment ago, right? So right there on your screen, okay? Just about everybody's got a smartphone. Go out there, take a picture of this, put the camera right up there. You can see that QR <laughs> the, the code. QR code yeah. The QR code right there. It's going to get you straight to Solutionaries. So it's on YouTube. You can stream right there. You can watch it. Anytime, 24-7, Kent, and you can watch the content from all across the country. And then also our handy-dandy News for Jacks Plus app. Yep. So on your streaming devices, on your phones, you can watch our full episodes. Our episodes are about an hour long. You can watch the entire episode of an hour long worth of solutions, or you can pick and choose the specific topic that you want and maybe spend five, ten minutes learning about it. How, how often are new episodes coming out? Once a month. So I'm already working on the next one with the team. Really exciting with about. this one. <laughs> for you, <laughs> for you, I will tell you. For our viewers, yes. So it's on the labor force. Okay. There's so many people that are struggling wow. to hire or struggling to get a good job or struggling to get a decent wage. So we are looking at what these new students want, what these employers want, what the job market wants, and then also some of these perks that are out there. Maybe you want to work from Italy. Maybe you want to work from a sailboat. There's jobs out there that are doing that. You've just inspired, <laughs> you've just inspired many of us who are watching right now. Yeah. Vic Michalucci, appreciate it. Uh, this is exciting. Thanks for explaining uh, how we can be absolutely uh, uh, benefit from this. Yeah. Thank you. We need you to stay here in Jacksonville. Uh, I'm, I'm Don't work on. from a sailboat. I'm planning on it. Thanks, Vic. <laughs>
All right, stay with us. Still ahead, a look at the new Smithsonian Institution Traveling Exhibition. It's all about unpacking and demystifying the concept of bias, and it's here in the River City. So stay with us on This Week in Jacksonville. The First Coast Heart Walk is back. Come to the Jacksonville Fairgrounds on September 10th and encourage family and friends to join you. Let's get moving to defeat the number one killer of men and women here in the U.S. Register today or make a donation at firstcoastheartwalk.org. At Fair and Farrah, we do big things. We take on the tough fights. For over 40 years, we've proven we can win the big cases. You can get your smile back today. At Affordable Dentures and Implants, we make high quality tooth replacement affordable for everyone. So whether it's a single tooth, full dentures, or life-changing dental implants, we have an experienced dentist who can help you go ahead and smile. Click or call to schedule your new smile consultation today. Go ahead and smile. Have a banana, Anna. Try the salami, Tommy. Jalapeno. You whip the gravy. Jalapeno. Yes. Easy. No, come on now. Got this. <laughs> Try a tomato, plate too. Here's Cacciatore, Dory. Taste the bologna, Tony. Everybody eats when they come to my house. Uh -huh. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. Here's water. Oh. <laughs> That's really good. I was Everybody a little nervous. You were? <laughs> <laughs> important health announcement regarding Camp Lejeune. If you or someone you know spent time at Camp Lejeune, North Carolina prior to 1988 and developed any of these cancers or suffered any of these injuries, you may be eligible for significant financial compensation. Call Camp Lejeune Victims to discuss your case now. Leaking underground tanks contaminated the drinking water with benzene and other highly carcinogenic chemicals, up to 280 times acceptable levels in some instances. There have been new Numerous reported cases of exposed personnel developing cancer and other serious health conditions. It is critical to take action and call Camp Lejeune victims now. If you or someone you know spent time at Camp Lejeune before 1988 and you developed any of these cancers or injuries, call to determine your eligibility for financial compensation now. If you don't win, you pay nothing. Call 800-820-8836. That's 800-820-8836. You're watching This Week in Jacksonville on Channel 4. Thanks for staying with us this morning. Jacksonville's Museum of Science and History has a new exhibit that I, I really think is compelling. Joining us this morning, Dr. Anthony Mortimer, the Vice President of Education and Exhibits at MOSH. Dr. Mortimer, uh, the exhibit's called The Bias Inside Us. Mm -hmm. And just the title caught my attention, so tell us what this is about. Good, and I can't take credit for that. Smithsonian designed this intentionally uh, to really catch people's attention and draw them in. This is not a topic that we would normally, as humans, just voluntarily discuss. Uh, but the main point of the exhibit is that we may not be discussing implicit bias because we are probably not aware of it a lot of times. Uh, so the exhibit really explains how implicit bias forms in our minds and how it can influence our actions. And then once we're aware of it, what can we do to counteract any negative at attention that that might uh, yeah. bring to our decision-making process. So I, I want to show you some of the images that you'll see at the exhibit here. Uh, and then this is the description. The powerful exhibition features compelling images, hands-on interactives, powerful testimonials and videos that unpack and demystify the concept of bias. So how was this created and then how, how does it work? I can't, the, this originally started uh, after the Ad Council's Love Have, Has No Labels campaign in 2015, uh, which was a nationwide ad campaign encouraging us to really get to know one another, uh, to understand yeah. rather than 
Not proceeding with assumptions, right. uh, which is something that human beings do. And that's really the emphasis. They wanted to show uh, a, an easy way to differentiate between implicit bias, which happens automatically in our brains because that's the way our brains work as humans. And we're usually not aware of it, but it does influence our decision-making process. Uh, yeah. versus explicit bias, which is we are acting in a specific a way based on those, yeah. and it's usually in a way that's unfair or false. And it's interesting, and I think the reason that this caught my attention, will catch the attention of, of other people as well, is because you're right, you, you don't think about some of those things. You make choices or actions or statements in some cases, and you, if you walk back, you say, well, where did that come from? How does this exhibit bring that up or educate us on what's going on there? Well, we start just right off the bat up front stating and reminding that this is not an exhibit about feeling guilty about anything. You're not a bad person if you have implicit bias. You are a human if you have implicit bias. We all like or dislike something and can't really say why. And that's because the parts of our brain that control that develop far more early in our lives than the prefrontal cortex, which is our decision-making capacity, which usually doesn't fully develop until we're in our mid-20s. So until then, we're just responding with the way that our amygdala and our mm. hippocampus, our fear center and our filing system, have interpreted wow. the various stimuli that we've gotten. So an easy example maybe, uh, m most children when they first encounter broccoli, think that they hate it or will hate it, don't want to try just, it. Just based on the smell. Because, sorry. <laughs> it, well, exactly. It might be, it, and that's a stimulus. It might be a smell, it might be a texture, a the color, all of those things, right? From an experience that says food shouldn't be that color. <laughs> so it takes yeah. effort to overcome that. Same is true with implicit bias about people, uh, no matter what the topic is about. We all have assumptions that our brain has convinced us over the course of our lifetime is true about a certain type of people. Yeah. Um, pretty much anybody that's not us. Yeah. We all have opinions that pop up and sometimes we may say, well, where did that come from? I don't understand. I, yeah. I don't dislike that person. But the key there is really just awareness of where that came from and then the conversation can turn to what can we do about it together to make it a better place for everyone? So before we run out of time, I want to make sure that you know how you can see this exhibit. But before we go there, Mosh hosted 200 conversations for 200 years race cards activity that was led and facilitated by 904. Uh, 904 word. Uh, it was a public uh, event to engage the community in these conversations. That was this last Thursday night. I love that idea of trying to engage people here. And then let me show you that you're looking right here. The Bias Inside Us, it's a community engagement project from the Smithsonian Institution Traveling Exhibition Service. The exhibit is on display at the Museum of Science and History now until September 11th. Uh, open today on Sunday, noon to five. And then check out the website, the mosh.org website there. You get all the times, the prices there. Uh, and final 30 seconds, do you think this uh, makes an impact in people's lives just going through this exhibit and getting that experience? That is absolutely a hope. I want people to leave this experience inspired and aware and ready to do something positive and to get to know their neighbors. And yeah. lot, many Great thanks idea. to the Mayo Clinic and Florida Humanities Council for their sponsorship of programs like that partnership with 90 Forward, which we will have on a regular basis moving forward. Dr. Mortimer, thank you so much. Thanks for your time today. Appreciate thank it. you for watching. Uh, next time, the president of Baptist Medical Center Jacksonville joins us. Nicole Thomas gonna share her efforts to build a healthier and happier city and that it starts outside the walls of the hospital. Thanks for joining us today on This Week in Jacksonville. See why every day more people are choosing News 4 Jax, Northeast Florida, and South Georgia's number one source for local news.